<laughs> Whoa! Oh, <dog. laughs> we're here, guys. We're here. Oh man, I forgot my prop. Hold on, Brian. Oh, take, take the reins. All right. Today we are doing Led Zeppelin, the mighty Led Zeppelin. I forgot to bring the record down too. You got a record? I got a record. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> It's called record talk, but no one showed up with a record. No one had a record. <laughs> House of the Holy, baby. Naked Children's. On Giant's Causeway in Ireland. Ireland. Oh, this is all rippled. Damn it. Is that a right. thing, or is that a... Oh, it's original, man. With my Zeppelin, I don't mess around. They're all originals. Same here. Same. Yeah. Oh, that smell. Right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's probably not public over there. Let's make it public. Stand by. Stand by to make what public? Uh, so people can sh share and such. Now, all right. It took us a while to do Led Zeppelin, but we are here. This is Houses of the Holy. It's their fifth album. It was preceded by what some people have dubbed Four or Zoso in 71. And then uh, this one came out in 73. And then you had Physical Graffiti in uh, 75. So nice little sandwich there. You know what? There's not a bad Led Zeppelin album except for In Through the Outdoor and Coda, but. Well, Coda's kind of the end. It's just like kind of yeah. like, you know. Uh, honestly, like this is one of those bands where I could just listen to all of it. And oh. like to be super candid, I forgot. You know, I sit there and I say, oh, my top five favorite bands. Like I can say it like it's my name. It's Pearl Jam and Nine Inch Nails tied for number one. And then uh, Blind Melon. Um. Led Zeppelin, and then the fifth one kind of rotates between Alice in Chains, Stone Temple Pilots, really changes. But Led Zeppelin's in the solid top four, my Mount Rushmore, you know? Yeah. Nails, Jam, Blind, Zeppelin. And I, because those bands are so special to me and so iconic to me, um, they're just sort of grandfathered in. I just, I just, I just, I, I love them as I love myself. It's who I am. I just know it. Yeah. But that being said, I don't, I'll listen to Pearl Jam recreationally. Uh, I listen to Niner Snails a lot recreationally. I listen to Blind Melon recreationally. Zeppelin, I really don't go cover to cover all oh, that often. Oh, wow. Yeah, not not recently. Not not. I mean, shamefully, not probably in the past near decade have I listened to a Zeppelin record front and back. Missing out, brother. Well, yeah, clearly I am because holy shit, this is a masterpiece. Yeah, it is. It's Are you frozen. Am I frozen? No, why? You freeze on me. How would I freeze? I didn't freeze. Freeze on me. Right you're frozen. Seriously? You're How frozen. is it possible? I'm no, sorry. No, you're no, no. the uh, Ethernet there. Now you're, not, now you're not, but you were for a second. So, so. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's funny. You bring up that, you know, Into the Outdoors, a lot of people's uh, least favorite Zeppelin album. And, you know, I guess rightfully so to an extent. Um, yeah, they, they're my top five, too. This is the only one to include a lyric uh, lyric book. Oh. Yeah. No. No. Oh. Yes. Great album, dude. Um, yeah, they're my top five. And the outdoor, I just always wonder what would have been, you know, had they gotten their shit together. You know, had you know Jimmy cleaned up his act, John especially. What would have been the next album, you know? It's 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 so you know, all these bands you think about it, the Beatles, what would have happened next? Oh, wow. Um yeah, Pink Floyd, you know, with all the guys what would have happened if all the guys got in a room and tried to do something else? And right. very, very seldomly is there a band, um, an iconic band, that their last offering as the original entity um, is a proper representation of what may have happened after they continued. If that makes any of sense. Of course, yeah. I mean, if you think about like how long the road was. So we're ready. This is the fifth album, and they're still going strong. Physical Graffiti is a giant. Yeah. You know, and but then you know, I sent you that that video this morning with uh, just the isolated drums of John Bonham playing the drums to um, all of my love, Beautiful. and yeah, it's amazing. And even in the thick of his alcoholic alcoholism and and everything that was going on, he's still just a solid drummer, man, with crazy chops, you know. And yeah. so yeah, I, I agree that the last effort sometimes isn't because of all the things that are going on, but this is it's hard. This it, is, a, is a perfect reminder of like how well balanced this band could be. I mean, think about it, like they were one of the, the the godfathers of heavy metal, you know, up there with you know Black Sabbath. Like they really 
brought in that heavy sound, but they could all, this album really showcased a lot of lighter side to them, but they could balance it so well where you go from light to immediately just a heavy punch in the jaw. And you're like, damn, it's a mud stomp. I think, you know, the first handful of Zeppelin records, they were stealing a lot from yeah. other people. Yes. And, and that was heartbreaking when I found that out, man. You know, and it wasn't, I'm not even like talking like the, the spirit, uh, you know, stairway blatant lift, but, right? you know, even like they were stealing like old blues songs and stuff and passing it off as their own. And these guys were just too poor or, um, just didn't know, but this record, I mean, I hear a lot of Zeppelin, if that makes any sense. To an extent, because I think that, you know, I think blues is a part of who they are. It's a shame that they had to rip it off of other artists who weren't as well known and didn't have, like you said, whether it was the know-how or the traction or the experience to kind of catapult themselves. And a lot of that could have been due to racial inequalities too. Cause I mean, don't forget that's who they're ripping off is a lot of uh, blues players that were black. Um, but like, you still hear a blues vibe in this, but this, yeah, this is. Oh yeah. I'm not saying the blues vibe is removed. I'm just saying like, I don't know. There's just, I like a great deal. This is them experimenting and really coming into their own, you know? Yeah. So let's let's dive in, man. Did you know I just found out in ninety nine this got diamond certification. Did it? Yeah. Man, it's just so cool. So cool. Yeah. What was it Gavin Edwards of uh, the Rolling Stone had this great quote about it. it says the epic scale suited Zeppelin. They had the largest crowds, the loudest rock songs, the most groupies, the fullest manes of hair. Eventually, excess would turn into bombast, but on houses, it still provided inspiration. And I was like, ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's yeah. a great way to answer this. Let's do it. <laughs> a song remains the same. Yeah. Um, Can't play the songs, so. No, we can't, right? No, I got in trouble last week, too. I just didn't tell you. Oh, did we? Yeah. Oh, he didn't tell me. <laughs> Told you not to do it, you bitch. <laughs> I did it. Yeah, we got a partial block last week. Uh, uh, Dick, three strikes, you're going to be out, man. No, th no, it, it says that they can't prevent that. But it's funny because, like, I played Bjork, and then Bjork didn't get blocked. Grimes got blocked. Um, and then, yeah, our top five got blocked. I think we played No Doubt, and that didn't get blocked, too. It's interesting what's getting blocked. I wonder, does I that have your viewership? It has to... Are those shows, do those shows have more views? No. No? Hmm. Hmm, this is quite yeah, brother. screw. I think it has to do with the music videos still. But last week we didn't play any music videos. I played one music video, remember? And I knew I did it. And then I just said, it's fine. I think I'm out of it. Yeah, so just didn't rub it. Uh, yes. So let's talk about this music without playing it. Yeah, the double neck guitar, baby. You know all about that. Um, so you have to understand something. When you listen to the song Remains the Same, it's five and a half minutes long. It um, Understand when it was written, it was following the recent Bombay trip that they had uh, between Page and Plant. So you can really hear that tinge of an influence in that song from that from that culture. Um, Where's and he, Bombay? India? The West Indies, I think, right? I don't know. I asked you. No, you ask me. I got to look it up rap um where's bombay oh there you go there you go did we let me ask our research department hold on <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. yeah but robert Plant described it as having traveled around the world several times over and seeing just the vast palette of people and cultures there appears to be one common denominator and that common denominator is music you know is it, the arts and, and the expression of, of that um, so this is really just an amazing song. There's a one in the second verse. He says, you know, California sunlight, sweet Calcutta rain, Honolulu starlight. The song remains the same. So no matter where you go, no matter what culture it is, the song remains the same. It's music. Music is a common denominator. It's art that brings it all in. Where is it? It doesn't exist any longer. In 1995, it changed its name to Mumbai, but it's in oh, India. Ah, oh, all right. There you go. So it's not Bombay. Bombay had, uh, <laughs> the British colonial rule. Or something. When you think about like Bombay Gin, it's like right. Yeah, yeah, that's where it goes. Guys, we teach you about history and geography on Record Talk. It's a whole thing. <laughs> oh man, 
Yeah, yeah. it's a beautiful song. It is an absolutely beautiful song. Yeah. Which, you know, this this has a, a video too. I mean, you've seen the video for that. Um, you know what I found was interesting about this album is apparently um, there were some recordings that were done at uh, Jimi Hendrix's uh, Electric Lady and uh, Lady Studios in New York. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there were several recording sessions conducted there. Some of the songs were recorded from these various sessions, but they never made it to House of the Holy. And then um, some of them were released on later albums. But there's a series of rock and roll covers including songs that appeared on Elvis Presley's um, gold records, but they were recorded at uh, Electric Lady Studios, and they still remain unreleased, apparently. Wow. So there's stuff out there. I mean, look, we just found out with our interview with uh, Christopher Thorne from Blind Melon, there's, there's, they just discovered, you know, new Shannon stuff, and it's exciting, man. Music. It really is. It really is. Um. You know, it, it's fascinating to me that we're still now with all of this music able to find Abba. What's that? <laughs> Abba. <laughs> you said that funny. I said something funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, what have I done wrong? Am I embarrassing? No. What are you doing? Knock it off. So yeah, anyway, everything that's going on. I just think it's incredible that we can still find things, you know? Yeah. Oh, God. Now let's get into this next one, the rain song. Yeah, this has got an interesting story to it. Do you know the story behind this one? I don't know. You know me. I don't know anything. Oh man! So George Harrison of the Beatles um, had stated that Led Zeppelin never did any ballads, and he was a huge fan of, of, of Zeppelin. And um, Jimmy Page was inspired to write a song. So the opening chords are actually the same as in uh, as in something, which is a Harrison song off of Abbey Road, and. So that's what kind of inspired them to do a ballad. And what a ballad. I mean, beautiful, beautiful song. Yeah. As a guitar player, it's one of those, you know, like white whale sort of ones you want to get behind because you can't play it in standard tuning, really. You got to get to this alternate tuning that Paige had. It's D, G. Oh, so a standard guitar would be tuned uh, E, A, D, G, B, E. Eat apples daily, get biceps easily. Rap school of music. What's up? This guitar is tuned to G D G C G C D. Interesting. That's, I mean, look. There's a two G's, two C's, two D's. So every string is doubled in a set in a different place. Interesting. So you get all these drones in this open, beautiful, beautiful. What's up, bruh? Oh my god! This is really, really cool, Brian. Um, yeah. That is cool. You know, Travis Warren from uh, Blind Melon, he plays around with like, a lot of different weird uh, tunings. You know, it's something that I've never gotten into as a guitarist because I have a hard enough time playing in standard tuning. But it really, it you know, like Joni Mitchell was notorious to just tune the yeah. things, and, or so Billy Corgan, just tune the tuning pegs until it sounds good. Yeah. Um, and ironically, our song, uh, All Is Not Fair, is in dadgad tuning which i only know from cashmere which is another zeppelin so i mean there's there's some dadgad. different tunings do bring out different things i'd have never written that had i not tuned the guitar that way and i guess similarly this song might not have existed in the yeah. way it does had it not been that way but man what a haunting uh intro the guitar oh, it makes me feel again feel it's, it. it's like it's like it's weeping it's beautiful weeping and it's it's awesome the strings section is played through the mellotron by john paul jones which i was i like it it sounds great don't get me wrong this album is phenomenal i just i there's a part of me that always wish that there was an actual string arrangement you know like an actual workshop it would be interesting to kind of hear that um it would just give it so much more oh, you know a lot of their songs i'd like to hear you know done orchestrally Oh God, yeah. Well, there was that string quartet that was done. I remember buying that at Tapeville once. Um, the Led Zeppelin string quartet. Yeah, I remember that was a thing, and there was like string quartets of a lot of records. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny you you reference John Paul Jones. I think you know he is he is forever and always the unsung hero of of the band. You know, if you were to speak to a layman off the street, they're going to know Robert Plant. They're going to know Jimmy Page and they're going to know Bonham, but a lot of people kind of skim a lot of people not in the know. I'm not saying that I'm fuck uncovering lost treasure here, but a lot of people not in the know graze over him. I mean, a couple of guys that aren't so good to me went to go see Page and Plant live and John Paul Jones wasn't there. And it's just, you know, maybe it's better that I wasn't there because of that. But um, 
Yeah, James isn't even here, and you're still riding that freaking horse into town, man. <laughs> yeah. Hell, okay. Hell no, I just set up a bat signal. Hell no, it's coming. Cool. Speaking of James, is he? I thought he was working on that. All is not fair. What's going on with that? We should ask him. Yeah, we should, James. We should ask we're him. James, 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 where are you? Yeah, where are you, James? Um, yeah, this song is beautiful, dude. I mean, sonically, it's beautiful. Lyrically, it's awesome. There's a lot of symbolism, like you know, painting. You know, the first verse paints this beautiful picture of the spring, which is a close symbolism of the fond love of this person. Then the second verse goes and introduces this man who's running away from the keepers of the gloom as he sings. Which is such a great line, the keepers of the gloom, like the, these demons behind me that I just, rather than face them, I'm just trying to escape. And then yeah. third is that sheer jarring reality of his winter, which is the gloom is now upon them, meaning him and, and his relationship and, and their distance. So it's just this awesome, awesome song. And there's one of my favorite lines in here. It says, upon us all, a little rain must fall. I, that's one of my favorite lyrics. Uh, it's great. That is great. Yeah. You know, coming from that song, you get into Over the Hills and Far Away. Um, this one begins, it's a nice, so you have this ballad, and then you have Over the Hills. It's kind of like, again, a softer entry, but man, does it kick ass, though. I think that one is, you know, one of those, like someone starts playing guitar, they get into Zeppelin, that's in like the top 10 Zeppelin, you know, things that everyone learns. It just is. Yeah, right? for sure. Right? I mean, it's it's going to be, it's going to be um, Black Dog, Heartbreaker, uh, I mean, it's just, it's just there, you know, oh, yeah. and it's, oh, yeah. in turn, it, it's, there's a lot of techniques, there's hammer-ons, pull-offs, a lot of trill kind of stuff going on, but man, that's just, that's an iconic, you know, you hear that, you know, and then the way it builds, as you're saying, you know, it starts off a bit slower and then. Yeah. It's about the hippie lifestyle. Um, and you could hear, you know, what's cool about the songs you could really, you were talking earlier about like here, they really came into their sound, but there's callbacks though from their roots. And you, I hear a lot of DNA from the third album, three, um, the, the, the acoustic playing, the immediate recognition of how um, this kind of shows Led Zeppelin with the masters, not only conjuring up the heavy beneath the lighter side of their sonic creations, but also balancing that melding of various styles of music. Cause you hear folk here, you hear rock and roll, you got edge of heavy metal. You also have a little bit of blues. It's just, and it all works. It doesn't feel disjointed. It's not, you know, it's, it's killer, man. It's one of my favorite tracks off this album. Yeah, it, it's an iconic song. And, you know, really, like, you think about it, music today. Okay, this is a 4 minute and 51 second song. It's it's the shortest song thus far on the record. Right. But you got to wait until a minute and 30 seconds, which in 2020 time <laughs> is a million years for it, to, for it to pick up. Kids would hate, like, thrash metal in the friggin' 80s. They couldn't, they couldn't handle it. They couldn't handle it. I mean, a song right now, forget, like, it just hits right with the chorus. Yeah. It just hit, hit him with the hook, you know? Right, and then, yeah. <laughs> th this, um, you got to work for it a bit, but man, does it pay off. Oh, Dylan's here on YouTube, huh? The ex con like, That's Dylan, right? The ex -con? Directly. Yeah, this directly has been summoned. Dylan's been sending me some pretty cool videos on uh, Instagram, little message uh, back and forth. He's been showing me like just some killer shredding guitar players. I can't remember. I have to talk Let me see if I pulled it up. Jason Richardson? Yeah, that was one of them. Yeah. yeah. Jason Richardson. Um, there's somebody else. I was just like, blown. I mean, whoever he sent me is like, how, how does that person's fingers move that way? Like, that doesn't make any damn sense. Dylan uh, can play like that, man. Dylan shreds. I know. Yeah, J Dylan shreds like no other. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, Richardson. Jason Richardson. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Killer stuff, man. Yeah. You guys, share us with music. We got some cool stuff coming in the, in the New Year's. All right. What we got next here on this record? We're already at the halfway point, believe it or not, kids. Yeah, this is short. This is a short album. I mean, it's I mean, it's short in a sense. It's forty minutes, you know, almost almost forty one. Um, but it, it never it, it never lets up. It's just, it's killer. Yeah. So the fourth track is uh now we're at the shortest three minutes and seventeen seconds. The crunch. What are your thoughts on this one? I feel like a lot of people hate this. Okay, so I like couldn't stand this song. He couldn't stand the way he sung it. Um, and I get it. It's a different Robert Plant. It's a little bit more high pitched. Fraggle rock feel to it. <laughs> it is as a complete work. It's my least favorite song, but there are the intro, the drums in the beginning. I pretty much just like it until it gets to this like jangly. It's like Zeppelin doing funk, but it's not. 
Well, that's the thing. So John Bonham wrote this, and he and that's what that thing's cool about. He developed a funk beat that would be damn near impossible to dance to. That was his goal, um, because it kind of jumps on and off the beat. Um, and with Robert Plant, I think the reason why he sings that way it's his way of giving a tip of the hat to James Brown, because he even says, you know, take it to the bridge. Um, has anybody found that confounded bridge? So I don't know why he chose to sing it in the pitch that he did, um, but I don't hate it. Um, you the know, vocals bother me. The music's cool. I can dig the music. I think a lot of people lost it, and they said that in several interviews. I know Jimmy Page talked about it. It's like, you know, it demonstrated how fun the song was. It was it was a joke, and the band, you know, knew it was aware of it, and, and they were kind of surprised that people didn't pick up on it because they even played around in the studio with putting dance steps on the cover of the album. It was a joke because that's how the song was. It's just a joke. I know, like, John Paul Jones, some of the songs didn't like some of the songs. He thought they weren't well thought out yet. I'm yeah. not sure if it was one of them. I know um, – the, the sixth uh, uh, song, song was, but what did they say? One minute, 20 seconds. That's <laughs> points. <laughs> you're three seconds in tool time. <laughs> like tool time, like Tim, the tool man, Taylor. Oh God. He doesn't even know what that is. What? Right. That's very funny. Dylan, that's the second week in a row. You've said something very, uh, Dylan's got some pretty, pretty clever. Yeah, dude. I like it. I like your input. Yeah. Keep it up, brother. Yeah. I mean, this song, you know, it, it's, it's, it's iconic, you know, Zeppelin, you know, you get to the sec, maybe the third tier of Zeppelin known songs. This is known maybe for those infamous reasons. I'm not sure, but it's, listen, you can't have, it's very difficult to have eight songs that are the same. There has right. to be some give and take. And unfortunately, at the disadvantage of that song, there are some truly incredible songs on this record that yeah. just by comparison alone makes it less, in my opinion. That's all. That could be. Yeah, for sure. Dancing Days. Dancing Days are here again. Um, Not by Stone Temple Pilots. No. <laughs> Much better than Stone Temple Pilots. Uh, it's another uh, song that's influenced by their trip to Bombay, which no longer exists, as Rob pointed out. Our wonderful Mumbai. geography lesson. Mumbai. Mumbai. Uh, and just fully embracing the silver lining of life. It's just a happy song. It's just a really happy song. I got my flower. I've got my power. <laughs> He's not railing it. Seventy-five percent. Or is it? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> anyway, um, I've been told that living out here. Um, like, holy cow. Um. You pull that out, it's like it reminds me of the jug in Land of the Lost, Will Farrell, where he's collecting the uh Triceratops. Yes. <laughs> in Land of the Lost, when he sings the share song into the crystal. I believe in love after love. That made me laugh. So hard. Like so because it just didn't see it coming. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Pride's amazing. Holly, you should sit on this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, we've gone off the rails. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know where I was going with this. Flower power. Flower oh, power. Apparently, I say Mario wrong here. Apparently, in in, in uh, Illinois, it's Mario. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be said. But I'm from New York, and I say Mario. Mario, right? I I catch Jack saying it that, so I say no, no, no. It's Mario. Mario, Orange, Florida, New York. Right. That's how we do it. No orange, no Florida, no Mario. And let me tell you too, the guy who goes Hadouken, I don't give a shit how he's supposed to be said. That's Ryu. Okay. Ryu. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the game says Ryu. Yeah, the game is wrong. It's Ryu. <laughs> it's Ryu. <laughs> Ryu wins. Oh, this game is wrong. There's an accent in this game. I want my money back. Oh man. Now we're now we're off the rails. Now we are. <laughs> we got Street Fighter. We're definitely off the rails. <laughs> Woo! All right. Hey, all right. All right. How do you say the name of this song? So it's basically Jamaica, but right? it, it's um it's an English, you know, the way um an English person would say Jamaica. So some people call it Dire Maker. I've heard it called uh Jamaica. It's again, it's another song. Plan explained that the title is originated as an old joke where two friends have the following exchange. Um my wife's gone to the West Indies, Jamaica, which in an English accent, sounds like the Jamaica. No, she wanted to go. So <laughs> cheesy, <laughs> dry joke. Um, I love the bass on this song. It is such a thick sound. It is ah, strangled by it. It's great. Another classic Zeppelin tune. People know it. 
you know, it's a staple on Q1 or 4 or 3. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's Zeppelin takes reggae, really, you know, and it's... It's one of the few Led Zeppelin songs to also feature all four members sharing composing credits. So, uh -huh. um, yeah. And it says on the sleeve, if you watch on the on the pressing, it's a, it gives tribute to Rosie and the Originals, if you look in it. And it's a, it's a reference to the doo-wop influence for the song style. So it takes doo-wop and it also takes reggae. And this is the song that John Paul Jones wasn't a big fan of because he's like, I felt like it was a good idea. I don't think it was well worked out to be put on the album like this. Interesting. The rest of the band, I think, was like, no, this is this is fine. I think John Paul Jones, I mean, they're all perfectionists in their own right, but I mean, you've seen some of the work he's done since. I mean, have you ever listened to that album with um, Dave Grohl? Good Vultures, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. One, the, they only did one, right? Yep. Yeah, it's a great album. I tell you, I met that guy, not a, 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 a Josh from uh, Queens of the Stone Age. No. I was, uh, we were in California a couple years ago, and I was walking from our, uh, Sam was getting ready. I was walking to a coffee shop around the corner from our hotel. It was like a seedier part of town and like um i'm about to order and then someone walks in and it's like a tall guy and i catch him like peripherally and i'm like oh and it's like it was unclear whose turn it was yeah so i'm like no nah, man you're good don't worry and he's like how do you know i'm good maybe i was gonna order a thousand dead puppies would i be good then and i'm like your new <laughs> record is really good and he's like, oh, I'm just fucking with you. And it was like friendly. And like, I didn't ask for a picture or anything weird, but yeah. just immediately like obnoxious <laughs> in a cool way. And it turned out like he goes to a tattoo shop around the corner. That's why he was there. But that was my exchange with him. And it was awkward. I like it. I like it. <laughs> so about this song, honestly. Yeah. So like I said, this is my first time. If anyone's just tuning in, welcome to Record Talk. I'm Brian. That's Rob. Hello. Quick. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> When this song comes on the radio, I turn it off. But listening to it, it kind of like you know some like stairway. Yeah, but I don't know if I would turn off stairway. Like I wouldn't turn off living on a prayer. Like I'm that guy. But um, <laughs> I, this is in all of eternity not one of my favorite Led Zeppelin songs. No. But listening to it in this eight song snapshot sequentially, it made sense to me. Oh yeah, for sure especially because it's so light and happy and yeah. then one of my favorite led zeppelin songs comes on next and it just punches you right in the balls right well kind of going back before we go to that going like what band has been because i'm trying to rack my brain like what band today has i mean rolling stones is a good example their newer stuff that came out was is still still sounds good you know, yeah. it sounds terrible. You know, I haven't listened to the new ACDC stuff yet, but it sounds like ACDC. I mean, it's it's, it's really equally as good as everything else. Yeah, yeah. Let's jump into the next one. Ah, no quarter. All right, no quarter. Now I'm Definitely. I'm gonna show my my crappy fan. So Led Zeppelin to me. Uh, I first started playing guitar, uh, and then I just immediately just started diving into all kinds of music. And for the Christmas in which I had just started to really get into guitar. My aunt got me this three disc Led Zeppelin Greatest Hits. Oh, I remember that, yeah. It was like in a long, I think I yeah. have it here actually somewhere. I remember that, yeah. Stand by. Standing by, No Quarter, which on track was initially worked on during their fourth album, but was abandoned. Oh. You imagine No Quarter on the fourth album? Yes. Could be good. Oh, Rob found it, see that? Yeah. Keeping the people waiting, huh? I'm back. Yes. So is this? Yep. 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 Oops. And uh, <coughs> oh, it's only two discs. The third disc was an interview. I guess I never listened to that. Anyway, You're the worst. <laughs> no quarter takes. Oh, look at this. I was I was so naive. So my point is, I didn't know. My first Led Zeppelin album was BBC Sessions. Oh, okay. And then this. That was in August. And then I got this. And then I started to get into everything. Now, looking back, it's like four songs from every album. So on disc two, it has Song Remains the Same, Rain Song, Jamaica, No Quarter. And then we get into uh, Physical Graffiti, Houses of the Holy Casimir, so on. So in listening to this as a child, I didn't even listen to No Quarter. Skipped right over it. Yeah. The intro didn't catch me. Then when Page and Plant got back together, oh, here, we go. here we go. 
You know, I wasn't even going to. That's that's, that's low hanging fruit. That's too easy. But on that you DVD, picked it earlier, but that's okay. What's that? And yet you picked it earlier, but that's okay. Um, they open up with a crazy version of that on there, if I do recall. Yeah. And uh, I was like, well, what's this song? And then Tool did the cover of it. And now it has gone on to become one of my favorite Led Zeppelin songs of all time. And that's my <laughs> long-winded story. Yeah. No, I don't know if you heard this when you were know, trying to say it. It was initially worked on during their fourth album. And it was a band. Really? Record. Yeah. So this would have been wow. a – Yeah, which I don't. I think it wouldn't have fit. You know, I'm kind of – No, glad. no. We found it. That would have been disjointed. Um, see, I, my introduction to them was Led Zeppelin 2. And I listened to that cover to cover – hundreds of times and then i was like well, i just got to go buy every album and then i got one three and just kept going in order um <clears throat> so i kind of got to enjoy them the way they released back you know a little bit backwards because it started with two but this is apparently modified from a faster version that existed too yeah i'd be interested you know see that makes me curious because it's so so um Haunting, haunting. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. No quarter means no mercy for you guys who don't know. So show no mercy to the enemy that to be vanquished, and ask for no mercy when about to be vanquished. So um, <clears throat> it's pretty cool. The, you got, everybody should know who Rick Rubin is, famous uh, record producer. Um, he remarked on the song structure. It takes such confidence to be able to get really quiet and loose for such a long time. Led Zeppelin completely changed how we look at uh, how we look at what popular music can be. And that's so true is what we said earlier, like that balance, they are able to kind of do something like that and then just go in a completely other direction and make it work perfectly. Um, yes. <clears throat> so, I mean, I, I'd be curious, you know, it just makes me crazy because for a song like this, like, gosh, I would have loved to have been in a concert to see it live and just to know that some people were there and didn't invite me to that concert. I mean, it's Not just you, unbelievable. <laughs> Not for you, buddy. Not for you. <laughs> Did you, did, hey, what's up? You, you did, must, your ears must have been ringing when I was talking about uh, All is Not Fair. <laughs> I, I I haven't been able to watch. I'm, I'm kind of like in the middle of something. but uh, I just wanted you to be on so I could yell about not being invited. That's all. Is, is that really why I just stopped doing what I was doing? Yeah. No, Brian, Brian wanted – yes, partially, entirely. <laughs> but also <laughs> wanted to know the – fruit all day. He's like, it's too low-hanging fruit. I'm not going to pick at it. But he's been picking at it the whole goddamn time. So, guys, you remember the time we all saw Page and Plant together? I do, James. Awesome. I do, yeah. Yeah. You were there. <laughs> it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. I have actually, no, I still have my T-shirt. That was probably one of the best concert experiences of my life just because I'm never – no one's getting that chance again. No. Mm. <laughs> 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 oh, and I think that was just killed. Ah! So I, I what were we talking about? I'm sorry. I have I have the t-shirt, Brian, because like you just purged a bunch of t-shirts at one time. So it was this white t-shirt. Oh yeah. And I wore I wore it for years. I've I had cut the sleeves off because I burned out the armpits with my sweat. Um Italian problems. And uh forever, you know, I'm wearing it. And I said to Sam, like, where's my page and plan shirt? She's like, What? And I'm like, you know, that white shirt, like I sleep in all the time. Like, where is it? She's like, What are you talking about? And we're going back. I'm getting angry because, like, she put the laundry away. And I'm like, that's very special to me. Where is that? So when I finally find it, I'm like, this one. Concert. He's lost his shirt, too. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Go uh -huh. <laughs> So she goes, Pajic, Pajic Plant. Like, what? <laughs> and she goes, it says Pajic Plant. And I guess she thought the and was a K. So P A G A K Plant. <laughs> Project plans. Oh my God, Sam. So I bring you on here, James, to ask about the uh, update upon the All Is Not Fair and Love Is War. Did you finish the drums? I do forget. Probably. It's probably my fault. Yeah, no, that's been done for a long time. Mm. Son of a bitch, Rob. You tried to throw that on you. Mm. Yeah, no, I did that. I mean, granted, like, I, I sat on it for like a week or so after he gave it to me. I was just doing other stuff. But I mean, like, we're. It's been a while. It's been a minute. <laughs> so what do you think of The Ocean? One of my favorite songs by Led Zeppelin. I love it. Absolutely love it. So okay. it, in the DVD box set they came out with? Wait, wait. Rewind. We got to read one lyric from the second verse of No Quarter. Just so oh. people can, like, 
Led Zeppelin has great songs. They have songs about like journeying, like they take Norse and, and Scandinavian culture, but then they have like, you know, girl, I'm going to leave you songs. Um, the second verse, walking side by side with death, the devil mocks their every step. The snow dries back the foot slow. The dogs of doom are howling more. They carry news that must get through to build a dream for me and you. Boom. It's just so heavy, man. Yeah, I think as a, as a lyricist, he can get you know Lord of the Ringsy and and just really yeah. D D D and D nerdville, but he also is a poet and stuff like that's just so like whoa. Yeah. Are yeah. you okay, are, are you guys uh, are you guys playing YouTube clips right now? Or no, we get shut down. We get in trouble for that. Somebody's uh, you probably shouldn't play it last week, and he's like, nah, I got this, I got this, I got this. And now oh, they took they, they got that one. Yeah, now we got another warning. But someone tried to hide from me. Yeah. Yeah, like being each getting tickets to a concert separately and not telling me. I was just so, a young boy. I was like, a, you know, seven, and you guys just left uh, me out. You're in your, I'm, not, not I'm to, seven years old. You're in your middle teens at the time. It's ridiculous. <sighs> Not to rub too much more salt in that wound, but um, James, you sick? The, All the way. Um, every night I get congested, and I can't figure out why. It's the sugar and the whiskey. It is not. It could be. <laughs> it could be really, because that makes me congested. No, because I've I've had too many days this past like, I didn't have anything for like a week and a half. At one like in, in the last week, and I still had it every time. I've yes. never heard it. Guess what I want. Uh, guess I know what I'm doing tonight. Wait, you've never heard of No Quarter? Dylan, is that what you're referencing? You should listen to the Zeppelin version and listen to Tool version, right? And listen to the Page and Plant version because the Page and Plant version is better than both of them. So, so before you got on here, that's what I was saying is when I first got this Led Zeppelin thing when I was super young, I skipped over this song because the intro was boring. It didn't grab me. And then I saw it on the Page and Plant VHS that somebody had. I was like, "What is this?" Yeah, yeah. With the, it's just, uh, it's just him and uh, him and uh, what's it called? Hey, him and Jimmy what, Page what doing. What did you have? The one from the the concert we saw? No, it was the one that they put out when they first got together. Because you guys saw oh, the VH, VH1 one, right? Wasn't it a VH1? It was what? like, uh, it, it was, it was almost like. Uh, but they had like, cool, like. It was almost like an unplugged thing. They had like a whole yeah. Indian orchestra oh, with them and everything. Like, oh my god! I gotta go see this live. Yeah. <laughs> That was a. Down. That's the version of that song that made me fall in love with that song, and uh, I still prefer it over any other version of it. Really? Um, yeah. Cool. Just be. Just. Uh, is that one? It's the No Quarter Unleaded. Yes. Yeah. No Quarter Unleaded. Yeah. It was. Yes. So, yeah. I don't know if you guys. I can't hear you when I'm not here because I wear headphones like a professional. It's. it's uh, it, the the twelve string with the phasing and like the there's just like it's even though it's like it, it's shown as like a live performance and it's like the way that they show the whole thing like it's like a you know an outdoor thing that's garbage it's definitely a studio version of the song but um it's like typical Jimmy Page that there's probably like fifteen tracks of that guitar and it's so thick and lush and it's just wonderful why why Telecaster why not? is that a, a pro Tele this is a uh... An ultra. Look at oh, the, the ultra because it's got the heel. Look at that belly cut. There. You see that? Mm. That's pretty cool. It's got a lot, like a big heel cut, and that whole like the heel carve is really nice too. That's right. Yeah. Is the top? Is the uh, the nope. elbow nope. recess? No. That's still sharp. Yeah, but it fits in your belly so nice you don't notice. I don't really mind that that much. Sorry, guitar nerd stuff. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never heard the ocean either. Never heard the ocean or any other Led Zeppelin song. I only know like two. I'm an uncultured, uh, uncultured Dylan, swine. Dylan, hold on. Right now, you have made this exactly what we do serve a purpose. Yeah. Because you, as such a young, talented kid, to be hip to this music, it's going to change your life. It'll help your guitar playing, man. It'll help your scope and, and understanding of how to balance. Like, if you listen to how to page and, and crew, we able to balance from heavy metal to folk to back to rock and roll and add a blues element. Like you'll learn so much as a guitar player, just a, an enthusiast of music and, and composing. Like there is so much to unpack from uh, uh, all the things and not that. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of uh, ethnic quality too on Houses of the Holy that uh, that's in a lot of Zeppelin's later music. James, you know yeah. Bombay isn't a place anymore. 
I did not know that. Right. <laughs> we learned that tonight. Mumbai. Mumbai. Bombay is now Mumbai. Yeah. Is, uh, I think this is proof positive that the educational system in America could use a good quick kick in the ball. I've always said that that's educator speaking. When when was it no longer a thing? 1995. I really I have no early enough for us to have learned in high school. The city's official name changed to Mumbai from Bombay happened, where regional political party uh, came to power in 1995. So that's before any of us were in high school, except for Brian. So. Oh, no, yeah, were, no, that's not true. You're in high school then too, right? When, when was your freshman? I was. Pr- that was your freshman I, it's, year. It's hard to say if I was a freshman or uh, Sophomore. what's it called, just getting out of uh, yeah. junior high. Yep. So yeah, we don't know things. Yeah, I uh, I had no clue. <laughs> I don't think Yugoslavia is a place anymore either. That's not. That's just because that joke. By the way. All right. Anyway. Um. So. <laughs> 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 Rob's so the, theme tonight is to drive off the rails. Just, just as many I had noticed. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> just jerking the wheel every which way again. I'm sitting in the back seat of the car on an icy road, and you're trying so hard to keep it straight. And I'm holding the uh, help the the hanger things on either side. The and I'm tra- huh? The old shit bars. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, how about that we're wearing very similar flannel here? This is my flannel, my new press picture. If you guys saw the, the uh, post, yeah, today. black shirt. And I got a white shirt. We're uh, polar opposites here. Yeah. Hair, no hair. Mm. Facial hair, no facial hair. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Doors, shit. Uh, they're out of line. My bad. I was just so close to breaking it for when we we're being live. It would have been terrible for everybody. So the ocean. It's <laughs> good. Change the subject. There is um, change the subject. Get back on track. <laughs> there's a, a a Zeppelin. Um, they put out like a multi disc DVD. I think it's their only like official box set of DVDs, and it has a tremendous collection. Again, it, I think it's out of print, but you probably can find it on the internet. Um, there's a version of them doing the ocean, and it's like late 70s zeppelin so like jimmy page is in like white pants and like a blue button-down shirt half tucked in he's playing the dan electro guitar and uh it has the so he's playing that all swaggery because he's like post heroin page just and then for the drum fill he's like dig it 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 and he like just slams at the air every time where the fill happens but he's so wiry like his whole body it's like I'm loving it. You know, like you got to see it. it. It's crazy, but it's iconic to me. Wait, so we, about, what? What was it like? Do it again. I can't. I can't do it again. That's it. <laughs> no, you'll see my. You'll see my jeggings. <laughs> I can't breathe, man. So it's a great song. Uh, it's amazing. Actually, I uh, because I was pulled away from something to be told how bad of a friend I am. How bad of a friend we both are, apparently. Apparently. Um, oh, strength in numbers. Yeah, you know, I, I could also mention when I went to the guitar exhibit in Manhattan that I didn't take Rob to as well, I saw Jimmy Page's original uh, Dragon Telly. That oh, was pretty he, great, too. And the amp that he recorded all of Houses of the Holy with. I just r- smeared in his face. <laughs> I, I, I thought he was going to go. <laughs> Look at it. It, was, it was the whole rig that he used to. Re- I think it was some of the physical graffiti rig, too. <laughs> I can send you pictures. Oh, I'm getting angry. He's getting. <laughs> He's so mad. But I feel like I've leveled the playing field here a little bit. All right. So our guest next time is going to be the <laughs> dude with the matching Bentley and the gun and the watch because he's definitely a better friend than James. <laughs> that guy needs oh, better God. taste than guns. Oh man. Uh, you know, fun dick. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm I'm happy you looked through the rest of it to see it because it's just so freaking ridiculous. It's horrible. Oh man! Woo! Right so that's that's uh, that's this record, guys. This is cool. This is the song. Um, the ocean's about the the sea of fans looking out at the sea of fans, and then um, it's got an unusual time signature. We can talk about that. It goes for a bar of four four, and then a bar of seven eight. So it's got like this. We um we had our our kid group uh back when we had it, real life. Um, one of, one of our student student bands, you know, they're picking songs to play and like me as an ass i'm like oh you're gonna play the ocean you're gonna play uh 
Spirit of Radio, just like crazy time signature. And the drummer Dylan, he's ridiculous. He is a bootang when he pops on here. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Wa- watching them, you know, uh, deal with those unorthodox structure to a song rhythmically. Um, and then having you know, a girl sing the crap out of it. It was just really cool to watch. I got to throw a video up. It was really special. Yeah, throw a video of that up, please. Yeah. It, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, I would like to see that, dude. I, I think there's a I, – I mean, you're done with the record, so I guess I'm not sidetracking you. But I think there's something to be said when you're, uh, when you're learning and you get handed something like that. Like there's, a, there's something on Mind Crime that's, I think, 4-4 uh, four, four, and then does something similar and goes into like 7-8 or something like that. Um, Sweet Sister Mary, I think is the track that does it. And, uh, you don't, if you don't think about it in regards to what it is with the time signature and you just kind of go with it, then it gets a lot easier. That's what it is. And that's my biggest thing. Like, um, in my teaching, I don't give a crap. You stroke down, 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 up, down, or is it down, 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 up? No, no, no. If you can feel it, if you're handed a pre-existing piece of music. And you know the material and you can feel what's happening like you just said it's not going to be con- you're not you don't even notice that something technically yeah. outrageous is occurring because it doesn't right. make sense to you yeah, think about exactly. money money is is you know that's not what music but anybody anybody can play money if you are given the you know how to play it because and all of a sudden you're doing something that's not what you would normally do right yeah it's all about feeling it man you're in the art man I eat art. If anything, I feel like uh, it, some of that <laughs> stuff, if you were to try and count it while playing I, it, you'd I probably eat. play it worse. I it's, eat just, it's just easier to go off and feel. Yeah. I eat arse. I eat arse. <laughs> I feel like being arse. So, yeah, the house of the holy, everybody. I hope you guys dig it, Dylan Rackley. Uh, <laughs> Dylan's still talking about Dream Theater and things here, I think. But... Um, <laughs> All right, so I haven't talked about this yet to anyone except for myself, but I'm glad that we're all here. So, being that we're coming into the holidays, yeah, I think that next week should be our season finale, and then we pick it back up in the new year. We did talk about this. I know. You have to play the game. Come on. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Do we have scotch tonight? I mean, <laughs> is it too late? <laughs> nice and so much flour. Great. <clears throat> so I had an idea, um, and if you don't agree with me, that's okay. That's cool. But I thought all of us could maybe um, could maybe try to do something together next week, and it's a big undertaking. But I think with our powers combined, oh, the fragile! I think we can do it. Huge. Going the fragile, huh? No arguments for me, but uh, that that is gonna be more than one hour. Yeah, how do you want to handle that? Do you want to split it and then come back in uh, the new year for part two, or do you want to just cherry pick, like have all of us kind of like? Pick oh man, top, I, I, I I I couldn't think of common denominator is. I, this is I, my favorite Nine Inch Nails album. I cannot cherry pick. I, I couldn't dream of leaving it at the great below and then trying to come back and, and not right. going straight into the way out is through. I as this that's not uh, gonna work. <laughs> we're gonna have to uh you have to split it up, man. You can't you can't expect people to stay here for over an hour. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. Just a thought. That is a good thought. I like it. You don't like it, but that's okay. No, I do. I don't like doing it. Like you said, you, we've talked about this. We, we've tried doing like a big long episode. We don't, you know, it's hard to kind of. How do you feel about splitting it? Um, I don't know. Or we could do rock set. He doesn't, what, you want to do what? We could do rock, rock set. set. <laughs> Be nice. This is her death anniversary. Her death anniversary. At least he didn't choose a tool record. That would take months. Yeah, that would. I wouldn't well, choose a, a, late, tool a later tool record. Would I think you could probably get away with Undertow or Enema in probably one one hour? Oh yeah, for Opiate, it's a pretty fun. Yeah, yeah you can get away. Opiate's pretty easy. Yeah, but mm. oh, Rob is Rob is pouty right now. What's going on? I was about to give you a hot take that's going to shatter the world. Ready? 
Uh oh. Tool. Overrated. Oh. Let me tell you, on that Lateralis tour, they broke it for me. They broke it. That that ruined them a little bit for me too. Why? Explain because the, for me, it was seeing a band that I really love, and I think I could have counted the number of songs they played that night on two hands. Because for 45 minutes, Adam Jones played a D and an E chord for 45 minutes with just a light on him. And that was the end of it. And maybe it was performance art and I just didn't understand And it got it. slower and slower It, it and took slower. forever. And it, like they, they didn't play – they played a lot of Lateralis because that, that was what they were touring, touring on. But like a lot of the stuff that I, there would have been room for – like a lot of stuff from Anima and Opiate and from uh, Undertow didn't happen because there was this, it was literally, and I love Tool, I love Maynard and I love Adam Jones and I love the way that, I love Danny Carey. I, I love everything that they do, but there was a solid, maybe we're not being fair, Rob. Maybe it was only 30 minutes, but it was still 30 minutes. That could have been six songs that it was just, it was just this dead yeah, spot in the middle of the set. Really it was that painful. Long. Yeah, it was that it long. Was, yep. It was brutal, <laughs> and like from someone who really, really likes and admires what Tool does, <laughs> I tell you, but it was it was brutal to, to that was rough. And to quote Brian Maynard, stood behind a curtain the entire time, the entire time, the entire what? time. It was just a I, silhouette. I've never seen Tool live. I like them. I've never seen them live. Um, I saw a Perfect Circle open up for Nails for uh, the Fragility Tour, and I was. Oh, that sounds like a good show. It was an amazing show. Amazing. You, you see, like I honestly don't remember. You didn't go to that. No, I was that was the first time I saw Nine Inch Nails. So. I went. I to hell, I took a limo down. Yeah, that, that wasn't. That was. That was. That was. That's what I was not invited to. It was that and Page and Plant. When uh, we we all saw Nine Inch Nails, it, first it was. Of all, I was taking my lady at the time, so. Well, I don't think that turned out as well as we did, so I don't forgive you. What? I, I'm censoring myself right now. Wow. Anyway, but yeah, Perfect Circle opened up for them, and I was very disappointed. They were they were off off beat. I mean, Billy Howdrell was just off key a bunch of times. It was just it was a mess. It was terrible. It was it didn't translate live. And I was like, well, maybe it was just our show. And then in Tapeville, I remember going there and I saw um, a live cut of that uh in philadelphia they had uh, the fragility tour nails and perfect circle on on two discs and i bought it and it was terrible on that too so like i don't know if it was like the whole tour i don't know if it was just those two shows but i was like ah yeah i mean that I, I don't i don't know like i like the newest the newest tool record i thought was good and the one before that i thought was good and all of them are good but they, nothing has stuck with me in the same way stink fist 46 and two those songs were just yeah. you know it's just that's what i'm saying like that it's like they peaked and then maybe they've just sustained since then that's you just me that you bring that up is like because i listened to anima recently and i feel like it is a disjointed album yeah it, it's not held the test of time so i did like it a great deal i was a bigger opiate H, and, good songs yeah opiate and uh undertow fan and i was huge with anima, but then I don't know. Listening to him very recently, like in the last couple months, I'm like, this is disjointed. It feels like we're putting in these instrumentals just to put them in. It just doesn't, it doesn't, I don't know. It feels like an afterthought, like Coda, you know, like here, here you go, here's the leftovers. So I, I disagree. I think that Anima at the time, yeah, but now, I don't know. It didn't hold that time for me. That's still something that, that's like, that is one of those rare albums. I can't do it as, as uh, casually as I could, like Pretty Hate Machine or Downward Spiral, but. I think Anima is an album that I can listen to uh, like straight through. Like, I can too. Like, I, I don't think that's a, a difficult album. No. I, it, I, but it does feel uh, disjointed, though. It feels like it's pieced together. You don't think I, so? I, I think so, but not, I, I wouldn't say it's bad. Yeah. No, I'm not saying bad. Not at well, all. I, I wouldn't say it's I'd say I bad. I said overrated. I would, I, 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 <laughs> I wouldn't call the the record bad for being disjointed. I, I think that's part of its appeal to to me at least. That that's part of its appeal is yeah. that it's kind of fragmented. Um, but overrated, I wouldn't say that Tool is overrated. No, they have a song called "Hooker with a Penis." Come on, how could they be overrated? <laughs> I I think that I, I, I was I, waiting. I was waiting for like just come on. This is a setup to get to say that sentence, which you don't get to say normally. <laughs> we provided context. 
But I, I, I think that I I'm think not a hooker with a penis. I'm just saying I'm the guy that's headed. We don't get I, to say penis on record talk that often. I think their more recent efforts haven't been as good as their earlier efforts. Yes. Hmm. Or, or is uh, or is uh, accessible is the wrong word because I'll listen to anything. They just haven't been as they just haven't been as good. So as Dylan, far as, man, as far if, as I'm concerned, or as if there's some, you know, why don't you DM one of us some songs that you think are great? We'll check them out. I'm not dead to it. It's not the doors, but the doors not closed, if you will. It's hey, just. Do uh, you like the doors? Who hmm? James? Yeah, James. I do. I find the I find the guitar playing interesting because it's all finger. Yeah, and uh, and no picking. Uh, that kind of throws me because I I couldn't imagine it, and like my fingers hurt when I play bass for more than like ten minutes. So it's it's a little interesting to me, but um, I, I I enjoyed Jim Morrison's things that he did back then because it was he got in trouble for everything he did, oh, and he kept doing it. And I I think that's there's something to be admired there. Maybe it's not the smartest thing in the world, but it's something to it's something different. And you know nobody did it before him, so. Yeah, I say cool. Let's do fragile. No, we can save that. Maybe that'll be our. Uh... I just think that we should split it. We've had this. We've had this. We're thirty episodes in. We've done the uh, over an hour, and you, you're the one that you've said several times it doesn't work. So then maybe what we can do then with the fragile is give us all time to digest it and do that as a part one, part two of next year, and then close out this year with something that's more digestible, which okay. we'll have to discuss in private. Privacy, I suppose. Operation right. Minecraft. No, I say like that's too deep too. Uh, I Mare de Nome. What'd you say? Mare de Nome. Perfect circle. First perfect Ooh. circle. That's a digestible album. Uh, just what do you want to do the Beatles? I know. What Beatles were we talking about? Revolver? Uh, Revolver. Where we could do... Uh, I could be a grade A ass right now. I'm trying so hard. Oh, do man. It. Do it. But which I don't know which Beatles album, the one where they're whiny or the other one where they're whiny, or is it the one where they're whiny or is it there's this one where they're all really whiny and then there's another one where they whine a lot. Which one? Which one? I don't know. Sorry. I just I, I, I just I'm not a Beatles guy. Farther away, James. What? Go farther away. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Rob, put on Roxette immediately. Oh, actually, it's been playing. Put on, put on Roxette. Get the brain bleach. It's been, it's been playing the whole time. <laughs> brain bleach. All right, we'll have to figure out what we're doing next week then. Damn it. Yeah, Somebody type in something good. Periphery. That's not easily digestible for everybody. Periphery is definitely not easy to, easily digestible. Holy crap. My son recommended Shakira. <laughs> That's what he recommended me. He's like, you're going to do Shakira? I'm like... Yeah, he's doing it. <laughs> Rest in peace. Oh. <laughs> oh, I still in my head. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm good. What the hell was that? My mic stand made her cry. Oh. Uh, <laughs> So I don't know if this is anything else you guys would be interested in. I'll just throw this out there. I've been listening to um, a lot of NXS lately. Mm. I forgot how much I enjoy that band. Uh, yeah. Kick is a great album. I just recently had to teach someone an NXS song, and I it's fun guitar. Yeah, which song? Uh, uh, it's only going to be like one of like four or five. Uh, what was the big one? I Need You Tonight or? Mm -mm, upbeat, dancey song. Oh, come on. It was like last week. Stand new by. sensation nope new that's nope. that's such a good song maybe it was need you tonight there's that, that one yeah need you tonight. <laughs> you're right hello <laughs> that's good guitar too that is really fun guitar that's very very that's quintessential strat guitar oh man you know what i bought off the top of the music i was a uh, grocery shop and i bought that was it laird's is that how you say it? laird's um Creamer that um yeah the, dude killer you like it right I feel energized it's like it, like it boosts up my coffee I'm like it's ah, the, it's the algae it's the yeah, algae man. I don't know what it is it's good it tastes good and I was like ah, no, I don't put I drink my coffee black so I was like all right let me try this because it's good for me it's got all these MCTs it's got the algae 
And I was like, damn, I have so much energy. You know how I've been finding that it tastes even better? I bought this on Amazon for $10, this like little battery powered hand, like Oh this. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I put that in there and it gets all frothy and amazing. Ooh. What's it do? You heard it. <laughs> gets all frothy and amazing. We know what he's uh, putting in the coffee. My mouth gets all <laughs> moist, excited to you know put the frothy, amazing cream from coconuts. Oh, all right. This has been Record Talk. It's been fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us in the Houses of the Holy. <laughs> so I tell Thank you for having me. <laughs> right for you. Peace Who's out. here? James? Huh? What's the who? I'm saying goodbye over here, and this guy's in, in the land over here. No, I'm not. I'm right here. I thought <laughs> we were off the air. But, uh, I'm not like having here. a seizure. It's just live, dum dum. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you guys for tuning in. Let's see who's still here. He's the admin. I can't shut this down. And he thought we were a dumbass. All right, let's give a shout out here. Um, so there's this band called Zero. Zero. Bobby, Bandy, Marco. Good guys. Oh, Bobby and, uh, showed up to the uh, Christopher Thorne interview. We're yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, it's a good guy. So I think in the coming year, we should have that that section where we just kind of review local music and stuff. And I definitely yeah. want to do a, a thing about them. It's a good record. Good guys. So Let's, that, big, big things coming in 2021, which we'll announce next week once we decide what they are. <laughs> <laughs> big things. We have no goddamn idea. Big things. Uh, maybe. No, we do have an idea. Maybe. No, we do. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. <laughs>